One, two, three, four, five, six. I'll probably really shout a bit and then eventually I'll calm down. My name is Colin Brazier. I'm Colin Brazier and this is GB News, Britain's news channel. Uh, I grew up in Yorkshire. I feel looking back that a lot of the stories that are not told in Yorkshire is one of the reasons I decided to join GB News. I'm Gloria De Piero. Well, the prospect of working with Gloria De Piero, who has been known once in a while to keep her voice down, is very refreshing. Right, I'll give you a proper answer now. <laughs> what was the question? <laughs> I grew up in Bradford. I was a member of parliament in Nottinghamshire. When I'd been a journalist before I was an MP, a community that I represented, former mining towns and villages, and the conversations that were going on there were not the conversations I was having. So many communities in Britain are underrepresented. And they feel like people don't care much about what goes on there. We need to be more reflective of the society in this country. Long before lockdown descended upon everyone like a dark cloud, I was aware of the temperature of debate rising in Britain. The national conversation on any issue these days becomes incredibly divisive. And these are unprecedented times, so everybody is experiencing different things. The pandemic has disproportionately affected the most disadvantaged people. Those are the stories that really need to be heard, and GB News is really going to be a natural home for those people. We need to reach out and tell stories from all corners of our nation. We really will try and see things through the same eyes as those people who feel they haven't had a voice and they haven't been listened to for rather a long time. Simply about expressing light and dark, good and bad, and I want the opportunity to bring forward the, the, the shades of what it is to be British. It can be fun, positive, and it can give voice to some of those people who don't feel that their voices are being listened to right now. But there are other stories of people in communities doing great things. You don't have to delve very far. See the real good in Britain's communities as well. Where are they? We don't just want to hear the sad stuff. We won't flinch from reporting the bad news about Britain, but we'll also not flinch from reporting some of the good news about Britain. I think we hear this word community a lot. Somebody might say I'm from the black community, for example. But actually, I think my geographical community is really important. This PC thing that has just got completely out of hand. I'm taking offence on your behalf because of this. And it's like, I'm not offended. What really matters to me, I think more than anything else, is truth. I want that to be somewhere where it's possible to speak your mind without fear of censure. And I fear that in some respects we're moving towards a world in which free speech and the gift of free speech is being slowly eroded. Arguments for the sake of arguments. It's time for us to start talking about the subjects that need to be spoken about, and not just from a perspective uh, that if you say that, we're going to cancel you. The truth is that a lot of people feel they are not hearing every side of the argument, and we can do something to address that problem. I like to hear all forms of opinion and be able to challenge it, but what I can't abide is someone who tries to escape answering what matters to them. It either matters or it doesn't, and if it does, then stand up for it uh, take it on the chin and defend it. If you're wrong, admit it. Just tell me how it is. It's a good time for people to be able to listen to varying views and not be told that's wrong, that's right. We're not going to force anyone to believe anything. It's not about that. It's not going to be another dull, rolling news programme. News shouldn't just be told to you. It could be something where you can actually interact with it as well. The audience won't be passive. They'll be part of our storytelling. I think there's going to be a commitment to hearing everyone out. Disruptive and constructive. I am suffused with intense feelings of love for the British archipelago, for the great depth of the story that's told here by the landscape and by the people. I'll be taking every opportunity that I get to celebrate Britain. And, and that's not necessarily in a triumphalist way. And that's why I like the idea of a channel that represents the whole country. Filtered through a wealth of experience and authority. With a sense of humour. GB News promises to have that kind of reach and depth. There's going to be something for everybody, especially the breakfast show. No, no, I'm joking. <laughs> it's the real thing. It is the real story. I think the three words that sum up GB News for me are real, measured, empathy. Britain right now. Fresh, experienced, challenging. Best of British. Truth at last. Britain's news channel. About flame in time. <laughs> I'm Alistair Stewart. Mercy Moreki. I'm Neil Oliver. Nana Aquir. My name is Andrew Neal. Colin Brazier. I'm Liam Halligan. I'm Kirsty Gallagher. It's Andrew Doyle. Gloria De Piero. Every side of the stories that matter to you this is GB News.
Yes. Uh, I think I'll be making the tea. I'm Simon McCoy. Sometimes I forget. <laughs> dot, dot, dot. OK, here we go. Camera set. It's very exciting to see something that's not just telling you what's going on, but asking you why it matters to you. Action. It matters to us. What makes GB News so different is the fact that it opens up the floor to people around the country that reflects them and their communities and getting access to vital information, but also with a little bit of humour and mischief and entertainment. It's not hang around or they'll find reasons to do it another ten times. <laughs> you mind filling with the bag growing up? How long have you got? I was born and bred in Hull, one of six children. We had quite a lot of struggles, challenges, adversity, but what doesn't kill you makes you stronger. We come on air at one of the most important times in British history. Coming out of the coronavirus, it's about how people find new jobs. News all of a sudden became so central to all of our lives because actually without the news, we didn't know how we were going to be able to live our lives. And for us to be able to say, right, we're going to take a fresh look at those things that have happened in the last four or five years, and we're going to take a fresh look at everything that unfolds in the wake of that. I think the timing is perfect. I'm going to be really looking forward to representing the stories of other communities in the UK. GB News is proud to be British. I think the clue's in the name. Britain is home. We want to hear what people's opinions are, trying to reflect what you're going through. Genuinely shake up the mainstream conversation, lots of new perspectives, and represent many of the views in the country that have been marginalised. I think every news network would say, we want to represent Britain. We do represent Britain. This is more ground up. The fact that we've got reporters who live in every area of the country telling us their stories about what life is like in those areas. We want to mix it a bit and, and, and show all parts of the UK to all parts of the UK. You've been from Northern Ireland. Yes, we all know about the troubles. And many people have been surprised by what we've seen in the news recently. That's largely not because those stories have gone away. And what's really important is that you get to hear those stories. It just doesn't deserve coverage when bad things happen. It deserves equal coverage at any point in the year. Fostering community, making people feel included, knitting people together is absolutely vital. It'll be less obsessed, perhaps, with what's happening in Westminster, more interested in what those decisions mean to you. Politics to most people is, are there enough services? Can they get treated in the local hospital? By involving people, you're going to end up with a situation which is much more broadly reflective of what the country actually is. Again, when you have opinion polls not matching up with the results, it's because people aren't telling the truth. They're saying what they think the acceptable opinion would be, which is the thing called preference falsification. It's not helpful. I was an MP during the Brexit debate and the referendum and the parliamentary hoo-ha that followed. As it happens, I voted to remain, but I respected the result. Brexit is at the heart of a lot of our problems at the moment because that entire debate got reduced to this ridiculous binary of good versus evil, stupid versus clever, racist versus not racist. This was a debate about our membership of an economic trading bloc, let's not forget. That debate worried me because there was a sense that some people's views were more important than others. Part of my job will be to to try and unmuffle some of those muffled voices. A majority of people feel that if they do want to have discussions about difficult issues, they risk losing their livelihood and their reputation. Progress is only achieved through social liberalism. It isn't achieved through telling people to shut up. What's important to me is to try and make sure that we hand over journalism to the next generation in a better state than it's currently in. So a lot of the time you watch the news, people are not really communicating. They're reading an autocue, it's quite clear. For too long, news has been a really confrontational, angry place. News doesn't always have to be bad news. We can also help restore a can-do attitude. A party time! <laughs> Sometimes the news can feel pretty humorless. The wagging finger. I think the audience will appreciate a bit of levity. I'll be doing a show at 8 o'clock called Andrew Neil. Took us six months to think of that title. Finally got there. <laughs> Too much of this political discussion, particularly around the culture war and all of that stuff, just ends up being reduced to people screaming at each other and storming off um, and behaving like toddlers. I'd like to keep the toddlers at bay. It doesn't mean throwing your toys out of the cot. Just get the grown-ups back. If I had to sum GB News up in three words, brave, challenging and bold. British, unbiased, welcoming. Good news now. Exciting, dynamic, different. Innovative, mischievous, honest. Informative, fun, yours. I'm Dan Wooten. Anaya Falaran Iman. I'm Michelle Jubery. Darren McCaffrey. I'm Becca Hudson. Alex Phillips. Tom Harwood. If I can remember it, yeah. I'm Simon McCoy. This is us. This is GB News, Britain's news channel.